Right now at Miami, where Hurricane Irma is bringing violent gusts of wind and rain. This morning, over a million customers have lost power. And you can see those waves getting very, very large, cresting there. I'm sure whipping against the land as they land. And it's not just Florida. We understand that the tropical storm warming is extended as far north as Atlanta, Georgia. And so there are millions of people in the path of this and the ancillary rains that, and winds that could be hitting well. That's right. Welcome back to KPI Fix 5 this morning. The time is 8 o'clock. I'm Phil Matier. And I'm Melissa Kane. Hurricane Irma blasted the Florida Keys just after 9 a.m. Eastern with winds up to 130 miles per hour. Meantime, here in the Miami area, huge gusts of winds and the threat of tornadoes continues and conditions are only expected to get worse. Hurricane Irma made landfall this morning, lashing the Florida Keys with torrential rain and powerful winds. Overnight, the outer bands of the storm pummeled southern Florida, triggering tornado warnings and some flooding. Already, more than one million homes and businesses in the area have lost power, including a high school in the Keys used as a shelter. I've seen a lot of people that were um, borderline crying, wishing they would have left. I've asked a lot of them, why didn't you leave? And they said, I didn't think it'd be that bad. Irma is expected to rip through the Florida Keys as a Category 4 storm today before unleashing life-threatening winds and deadly storm surge, especially along the West Coast. Do not think the storm is over when the wind slows down. The storm surge will rush in and it could kill you. Even though Irma has shifted west, here in Miami, forecasters say the threat of a storm surge still exists up to six feet. Amid the uncertainty, Florida residents flock to evacuation centers. We're stupid. We should have come to the shelters a day or two ago. <laughs> Danelle Rogers Jr., his daughter Gina, and their family pet are hunkered down in this St. Petersburg school. I hope it goes by pretty fast so we can get home fast. Irma's new projected path is putting St. Petersburg on track for a direct hit. Hurricane Irma is expected to beat down on the Keys for hours. This is a slow moving storm right now before eventually making its way northward toward the Florida Peninsula. Meantime, here in Miami, as you can see, the conditions continue to deteriorate. We've seen powerful gusts of wind of more than 80 miles per hour, and it's expected to continue that way throughout the day. Live in Miami, I'm Meg Oliver. Now back to you. Meg, what have you heard about a crane collapse in Miami? Phil, that has been one of the biggest concerns throughout this entire situation. These cranes, there are several of them throughout the Miami area, and they are designed to actually spin during hurricanes like this one. They are only able to withstand winds up to 145 miles per hour. So that was one huge test that apparently one crane failed miserably and went down. I can tell you that the conditions here in Miami have only been getting worse throughout the day. We've been live since 5 a.m. this morning. We had to come off the ground floor from down there and make our way up to a balcony where it's a lot safer. There are trees down in the high winds. There are even white caps on this retaining pond behind me. I don't know if you can see it because it's so miserable out here, but just a, a very, very dire situation out here and it's expected to get worse. Phil and Melissa. Thanks, Meg. Be safe. Now, let's go to Netta Iranpour with the latest on Irma's path. Netta? Yeah, it definitely is expected to get worse because it is moving slowly across Florida right now. You can see the extent of this storm. You can see it extending all the way towards Georgia, the northern portions of Florida, and of course, Miami right now, as we saw in Meg's live shot, getting a severe rain from this and strong, strong winds. That intensity really is strong here in this northwest corner of the storm. That's always when they get the strongest when it comes to these hurricanes. They're going to see the most amount of rain and the strongest wind. Here's that uh, future cast for the next 24 hours into Monday. When we see you back here tomorrow morning, Georgia is going to feel the effects. Also, it looks like as far the northern portions of Florida, certainly also not escaping this. So a lot of people went that direction, but they're also going to feel this storm. Here's another look at the tracking here. All the warnings have extended across the west and east coast. The spaghetti plots show it going right along that 
west coast moving very slowly. It last checked eight miles per hour. That's as, as slow as it's moving. Staying a category four at least through today is what's expected. That's sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. So you can see those wind speeds and just how far they extend. So it's not just the coast that's going to feel those strong winds. They're feeling it as far as Jacksonville, even Atlanta, as you guys mentioned. Tropical storm watches in effect for Atlanta, Georgia. It is a wide reaching storm. We'll continue to track this later on. Guys. Now, businesses across Florida are shutting down, including call centers that are supposed to aid with evacuations. But Floridians looking for a way out are getting help right here in California. Tampa's 211 calls are being rerouted to a call center in Sacramento. 211 began frantically building the system to allow Californians to take Tampa's calls on Friday and train volunteers on Saturday. And after an hour of training, volunteers jumped into action. But it does come with a unique responsibility. We know that these folks um, really don't know that they're calling to California, and so they expect that when we answer the phone, we know their area, we understand what they're calling for, and how we can be of assistance. And so that level of responsibility is not one that we take lightly. Right now, the immediate need is telling people whether or not they're in an evacuation zone and where they can find shelter. And humans aren't the only ones needing shelter from Irma's wrath. Zookeepers in Miami are scrambling to keep their animals safe. Now, the smaller, more vulnerable animals, like this critically endangered vulture, have been evacuated. But large animals, such as lions, elephants, and apes, are staying put. Their enclosures were fortified after Hurricane Andrew decimated the zoo back in 1992. But zookeepers still say they're worried. These animals go through a tremendous amount of stress. When you move them away from a familiar area, that stress can be very, very, very dangerous to them. Now, the we to weather the storm, the zoo's pink flamingos have been relocated to the zoo's concrete bunker.